Hey, what's up DIYers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking outdrive engines. In our case, we have an Alpha 1 Gen 1 Mercruiser, and we're going to talk about the common causes of why your upper unit is not pressurizing. Let's get started. DIYers, here we are back at the Craftsman workstation. On the left-hand side, you see our upper unit on the stand that has already been rebuilt, pressure tested, and ready to be reconnected to the lower unit, which is on top of the workbench on the white stand that has also been rebuilt and pressure tested and ready to be reconnected to the upper unit. However, scrolling above right now, is a link to a video that talks about the common causes of an unsuccessful pressure test on a lower unit. However, let's take a closer look. To a closer look in DIYers, this is a Mercruiser Alpha 1 Gen 1 outdrive engine. Again, all rebuilt, new yoke shaft, U-joints, gears, oil seals, etc. All lubricated, ready to be put back together. What I'll do now is reposition the camera and again, go through the common causes of an unsuccessful pressure test. First thing I want to talk about is your oil vent screw. This is the screw that you remove during your gear loop draining process or during the filling process. In other words, hooking up your gear loop pump, hose, and fitting to the lower unit drain port and pumping that gear loop into the outdrive until it comes out this top hole here. And at that point, you screw this tight and continue the steps in completing your gear loop filling process. And with that said, our hand pump kit came with three fitting sizes and this is one of the fittings. It's actually the smallest one that came in the kit and this is a perfect thread match to the internal thread on this case. In addition, this fitting has a rubber O-ring that's very important to ensure that it's there during the pressure test so it can create that airtight seal at this specific location. In the event that you hear air hissing from this port right here, it's possible that this fitting itself might not be tight enough or you might be missing the O-ring. However, it's not likely that you will be missing that O-ring. It's pretty hard to get off this fitting. You may need to just tighten this fitting into that thread. Do not over tighten it, but you do want it snug. And DIY scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows us performing a pressure test on this exact engine. And you will get to see the hand pump and the entire procedure as we did it. However, if that's not your case, you're not hearing any hissing sounds. You've got the O-ring, this is the proper fitting. You're not using a different size thread that is not creating an airtight seal. Then we can move on to the top portion here. This is basically your uppercase cap. And inside here is your vertical gear. And for our specific serial number, these four bolts had to be factory torque spec to I believe 10 or 12 foot pounds. And in the event that they were not torqued, to the proper specs, it would not allow us to properly seat the internal gasket to the case to create the airtight seal and gear loop seal at this point here. So if you hear any hissing coming from the seam of your cap and upper case, either you don't have these bolts tightened to specs or you over tighten them, which led to a shift in the gasket in between these two parts, creating an air leak. And that's not what you want. At that point, you need to remove this cap, install a new gasket and torque these to your serial number or service manual's specifications. Next, what I want to talk about is the actual U-joint and yoke shaft. And during the pressure test, you will see us actually rotate the U-joint and yoke shaft because inside here is an oil seal. In addition, you will have bearings, gears, and shims that are all housed in this portion of your upper case and secured in place with your retainer nut. And during the pressure test video, you will see us rotate this shaft because the service manual calls for the rotation of the shaft because in the event that the pressure test is going successful and it's holding air in the exact present position, that's great. However, again, the service manual calls for rotation of this to ensure that as you rotate this, it does not open up any portion of that oil seal and create a leak. If it does that, you need to address that. In our case, everything's installed properly, pressure test complete, full revolutions or rotation with the yoke shaft and U-joints cause no air to seep out or leak out from the seal. So again, that is a common cause that leads to an unsuccessful pressure test of the upper case or unit. Now let's go down inside and show you what's in there. Taking a closer look inside the upper unit, as you can see, there is our water pocket cover, brand new. The old one was melted. There is a brand new installed oil seal, and that is the bottom seal. And the top seal actually is installed upstream, and the vertical gear is positioned through it, and that oil seal creates an airtight seal over the bottom portion of your vertical gear, and that is very important. As you can see here, with our specific seal, look at how it is installed. We are looking at the open portion of the oil seal, and not sure if you can see it, but the spring is visible to us, or facing us. In addition, for our service manual, the top oil 
oil seal is installed properly as well, with the spring facing upward toward the top portion of the case. And during a pressure test of your upper unit, as shown here, disconnected from your lower unit, that oil seal right there, or in other words, the bottom oil seal right there, does not do anything because nothing is installed in it. However, the top oil seal is very important during the upper unit pressure test when it is disconnected from the lower unit because again, it wraps around the base or bottom portion of the vertical gear and creates that airtight seal. So that is a common area that could cause a leak in the event that you are using old oil seals or the oil seals are installed offset or they were damaged during the install process. In that case, you might need to remove the oil seal and install a brand new one. Not sure if this will be helpful, but I want to show you it anyways. This is our old vertical gear that came out of our upper unit. And the base portion, as shown here, that is what I am referring to when the oil seal grabs a hold of and creates an airtight seal at this location right there. In addition, you see some gasket compound around the oil seal. And in the event that you installed the oil seals without gasket compound, guess what? That's another common cause of what creates a leak or unsuccessful pressure test. And what I'll do is show you the compound we used. And DORs, here it is. I opened it up. I'll show you that here shortly. Aviation gasket and sealant. There's the part number. Down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link to purchase this. And this is very thick stuff. It's got to be this brown stuff. And again, if you do not install this on those brand new oil seals on your upper unit, that's an issue. It needs this. Back to the upper unit, I actually rotated the stand. I do want to go down below and show you the oil feed line or hole. And DIYers underneath here, there's a lot of holes for your threaded studs on your lower unit to feed through, as well as the nuts to secure the upper to the lower. And a common cause that someone can run into, believe it or not, is sealing the wrong hole. And if you try to seal a hole that a threaded stud goes through, you will never be able to pressure test the upper unit successfully. So again, pinpoint your oil feed line or hole or port. And in our case, it is right there. You can see it. And you want to use rubber or something that will create an airtight seal. In our case, we used rubber and a C-clamp. Again, you will see that in the full video of showing the pressure test of this exact upper unit. And that again, DIYers, is a common common cause that you could run into when not being able to pressure test your upper unit. In the event that you do not properly seal that hole and you hear hissing or air leaking out at that point, reposition your rubber pieces or whatever you're using to create an airtight seal and maybe tighten up the C-clamp to ensure no air whatsoever can leak out of that hole. Taking a step back in DORs again, those are the common causes that lead to an unsuccessful upper unit pressure test. Hopefully this helps. Hey, do us a favor, blow the video. You will see that thumbs up icon, click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.